Good evening everyone. <laughs> Welcome to I'm on the Yellow Bee community page this evening so thank you very much Vicky for inviting me onto this page. Um, I'm going to say hopefully if Vicky's listening can you let a few more students in please because they're all in the waiting room waiting for you to approve their their request to join. <laughs> They'll all be moaning at me otherwise. Um, so if you can do that Vicky for me that would be great. Um, I can see they're pending and I didn't want to approve them but anyway there we are. So welcome everyone. Um, I'm going to be doing a presentation this evening on beginners cocoa butter painting. So if this is something that you would like to consider I'm going to show you all the equipment you're going to need to be able to do it. I'm going to do a little bit of a paint for you. I'm going to show you some really interesting beginners tips and I'm going to hopefully then persuade you all to come and join my cake school which would be nice wouldn't it at the end <laughs> um, and talk to you about that as well. So it's a good opportunity to have a really good look round everything and see exactly what it is that I do. Um, now the only flaw in this minor plan here is I can only see you coming up as a Facebook user so if um, you wish to identify yourself if you can just write your name that would help me um, because um, Facebook's very unhelpful with things like that and I'm hoping as well that Facebook's not going to interrupt me halfway through and take down my feed which it seems to do on a regular basis at the moment although um, if anybody reads my Facebook page we are actually without a um, without we're out a telephone line at the moment somebody's stolen our telephone line would you believe it between us and uh, the next village which is just mad isn't it so oh I've got Nikki and Mark here so Nikki and Mark are two of my students which is lovely hello people um, they will be here to help Vicky you're going to find that Nikki is on those links like you wouldn't believe <laughs> she's very very good at it so um, you can relax it's all going to be good um, so hopefully if there's anybody there all oh, Donna's in as well Han Serena and Wayne hello hello <laughs> see they're all following me round now <laughs> That's all right. So lots of those are my students already. So if you have any questions this evening, I'm sure that they will be more than happy to give their student opinion. I will be telling you, of course, that everything is wonderful with cocoa butter painting and how much you're going to enjoy it. But they will actually back it all up and say, yes, we love it. Or they'll certainly give you an opinion anyway, for sure, which is what we want, isn't it? A nice independent opinion. So a little bit about me. So I have my own cake school, which is, oh, I've just put that up. Let's put it back up again. Uh, TracyManCakeSchool.co.uk. And my the majority of the classes I teach are cake painting. However, since, um, ooh, when shall we say, let's say probably December, I took the decision this year to start recording some of the stuff that I've been teaching for a very long period of time, which is things like uh, chocolate paste and airbrushing and um oh what else have i been doing transfer sheets on handbags lots of things that are very specific to me um and i've been putting those now onto my cake school and then i changed and opened it up for membership as well so you can go to my cake school and you can buy any class you like as a standalone class and you will have that class forever or you can join as a monthly member and that's what we started to do in December. So we've got lots of um, people here that have joined as gold members. So basically they get access to everything. So that's all of the cake classes and I've got over 100 classes now. And also or you can join as somebody who just wants to do cake painting. So that's silver. You can join as a beginner's cake painter and that would be the bronze level. Or if you don't want to do cake painting at all, I have got another level, which is the sugar craft, which is just specifically for royal icing and my Jubilee cake. Would you like to see my Jubilee cake? There we go. So I've just released this. This is my cake for the Jubilee. It's actually a three tier cake and that's me halfway through putting it together. And that is a recorded tutorial as well. And again, you can watch it you can pay for it outright or you can join as a member or it's on sugar craft and gold membership so there you go so it's a very uh, we've had loads and loads of people already start my gold members they're already there getting ready to make their crowns that's what i like to see <laughs> <laughs> they're already taking on a challenge but it's suitable for everybody so I've got lots and lots of different things on there and obviously there is a huge section on cake painting which is what I'm going to talk to you about this evening because um, 
lots of people that are on here at the moment I'm going to tell you now had now haven't picked up a paintbrush for years and when I mean years we are talking about lots of people since they've been at school they've gone through all of their adult life and not picked up a paintbrush and now they're picking up a paintbrush and realizing the benefits of actually being able to kind of zone out and paint and I teach lots and lots of things I have a YouTube channel as well which is at Tracy Man Cakes and I do regular demonstrations on Sugar and Crumbs, which is their learning hub. And also behind me, you'll see a sign that says Let Shop Cake Live. And I'm on live every Saturday morning or certainly most Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock. And I do lots and lots of demonstrations on there about how to use all our products, all the new classes that are coming. So lots of really interesting things that go on there as well. So Let's Shop Cake Live has its own Facebook page and it has its own website so that you can pop on there and have a look. It is really brilliant. It's a chance and an opportunity to see how the cake decorating equipment actually works. Um, and we've invented lots of cookie cutters and things. So lots of different things for you to have a look at. We don't tend to um, stock a lot of the same things as lots of other cake shops. So I've invented lots of bits and pieces. We do our own range of sprinkles. We do our own um, cookie cutters that are uniquely ours. And then we have masses of chocolate moulds. So if anybody's interested in chocolate moulds, you will um, enjoy those as well. And then we get a little preview on all the classes coming as well. So there's lots and lots of things going on all the time, relentlessly. <laughs> Uh, and lots and lots of classes coming out all the time. They say they've just had the Jubilee class and they're about to get an airbrushing class. I'm going to show you what they're about to get. So the school is about to have this one here, which is a Galaxy airbrushing class. So I've managed to persuade them all that any airbrushes that they've had in a box for a long period of time now need to come out of the box and they actually now need to use them. So this is our fourth airbrushing course this year and this is their next project and it comes out on May the 4th it comes out on Star Wars day as I call it and as it's a galaxy I thought that was quite appropriate but anyway so that's their next one that's coming but back to cake painting this evening because that's what we're here to have a look at so we're here to persuade you that cake painting is a wonderful thing to do I'm going to show you how to do a cake paint using some patchwork cutters so I want to show you some of the really more challenging stuff that I teach and I want to show you the uh, the absolute basics. I'm going to show you the whole range of everything that I teach so that you know where you're starting and you know where you're going to end up and all the equipment that you need to do it as well. Because sometimes when you hear something like airbrushing, beginners, cake painting, all that stuff, you sort of think, well, you know, what is that? I'm so confused. So what I've tried to do is I've invented a kit that goes with my beginners cocoa butter cake painting class so it's like for like and once you've started with that kit then you will find you will be able to use that kit right across the board so it's a little bit like buying um like buying it's not as expensive mind you as an airbrush um because you've got all the equipment that you then need to get going on it so i'm going to talk you through that kit now then we're going to start setting it all up and then i'm going to show you a really lovely basic cake paint using some patchwork cutters now with patchwork cutters, um, lots of you probably already know what patchwork cutters are, but probably a lot of you don't realise that actually they work as brilliant embossers and they're fabulous to paint. And I've spent a lot of time, certainly in the last six months, between myself and Marion Frost, who is the owner of Patchwork Cutters, um, talking about how to emboss on sugar paste and paint. And certainly I've managed to persuade a lot of people just to try that step first, and then go on to do the courses as well and kind of once you step into that realm you start to get quite hooked and put and brought in by the whole thing um, I'm not saying this is addictive but it is um, so once you've kind of started painting you'll realize just how lovely it is and you can completely zone out you don't need to think about it um, and I've got these tutorials step by step which again, you'll soon start to learn. And lots of my students now are applying the same procedures that I've taught them to their own work. And it's lovely. So I'm now getting to see some of them painting their own dogs, painting their own cats, painting their own, uh, some ladies just painted a rabbit that was very nice for Easter. So lots and lots of people are painting different things now. So once you understand the principle of it and understand how cocoa butter works, 
then you can move on and do your own things. And it certainly opens up the gates for lots and lots of different things that you can do. Now, lots of the people or lots of people ask me the same question is, well, it's going to take me ages to paint on a cake and I'm not going to disagree with you. I'm going to say it might well do. But what you can do is do lots of painting onto plaques. So you can use a plaque like this and you can do this separate from your cake. So you could do your little painting onto here, whatever it is that you're going to be doing well away from the time when you're going to be making your cake and then when you're ready to do your cake you can then pop your plaque straight onto your cake pipe round it something like that happy birthday around the bottom whatever it is that you're going to do and then that person when they get their cake because they always say the same thing i don't want to cut it can lift the plaque off and keep it so there are lots of ways around doing cake painting that don't put you under pressure at the last minute there's lots of ways you can paint directly onto cakes and lots of my students have been doing that but there are also ways of doing them on plaques which means that you have the ability to be able to then do it at a later date so you can then put it on there and do you know what if this goes wrong what you're going to do you're going to put it in the bin and have another go it doesn't matter because this is your template this is your practice area and you can then come back to this and have a go at it in your own time so this evening what I'm going to do I'm going to show you the course equipment now then I'm going to start doing I'm going to set this up with the patchwork cutters so you'll see how that's being done and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, say to you if you want to ask me any questions about anything as we go along I'll try and catch them sometimes when I'm painting down like this I'm not looking at the feed if it's a question about product um, Nikki I believe is on Nikki's my little online PA um, so she will put up any links to anything that um, we think might be relevant to you we've got a great big section on our website on patchwork cutters because we are a massive advocate of them they are brilliant for this um, but if there's anything else that you want to know we will I will do the best I can so if I've missed your question and you ask it again while I'm still live I will answer it um, or you might find some of the other students might jump in and ask the question for you answer the question for you so they're very good um, and do ask anything that you want to ask in terms of cake painting I'm more than happy to help Right, let's have a look at the kit. Let's work out what we need. So what are we gonna need to get? Let me show you my little beginner's kit and then we can go from there. So I'm just gonna open up the box, try and get myself organized. Looks like I've got everything I need, you never know. Right, there we go. So this is what a beginner's cocoa butter kit looks like. So inside the box, you will find a metal paint palette. So this is really important. Um, what you need to do here, this is something that's going to get very hot and it's going to melt your cocoa butter, which is going to be on here. And you're going to see all of that later on. I also teach with paint brushes that have got numbers on them. So if I turn these round, you should be able to see some numbers on there, 0, 3, 1 and 2. So when I'm teaching, I normally refer back to the number on the paintbrush. So I will say, you're now going to use paintbrush number 2, you're going to be using paintbrush number 3, etc, etc. And that's how I know you've got the right paintbrush in your hand for the job that we're doing. So it's very step by step. Um, to be able to help you do that. So you get four paint brushes in this kit and then we get a little bag of cocoa butter. Now this cocoa butter is going to last you for a very, very long time. It's got a massively long shelf, li uh, shelf life on it as well. It's 100 grams. You're going to see what it looks like in a minute because I'm going to get it out and I'm going to put it onto the metal paint palette and you'll see it melt. So you'll see what that looks like in a second. You get 100 grams of that. And then I've supplied you with 11 key dusting colours so we've got white we've got spring green so I've just chucked one on the floor let me grab that uh, dusky pink and midnight so that's black then we've got brown egg yellow petal blue red woodland green there's one missing one two three four five six seven eight nine and there should be a cream in there as well but anyway there's another one in there so there's 11 dusting colors in total so quite a lot of you will probably already be looking at this and go well i've got some dusting colors so that's that bit done i don't need those or you know if you're doing sugar flowers already you may already have dusting colors but the key thing that you need for this is a metal paint palette you need the paint brushes and you need the cocoa butter that's the absolute key to this and you can get them all, all the items separately if you particularly want to um, but this is a really good kit because it works out cheaper to get the whole thing in one go and these are your disposable items which basically means 
um, that you're going to have um, you're going to be replacing these as you go but you won't need to buy another metal paint palette you won't need to replace those paint brushes you may choose to get a second set just so you've got an extra set to play with if you're anything like me it's always a case of what on earth have I done with that paintbrush get another one out um, <laughs> and that's it so that's how that kit works now the only other thing that you're going to be missing from all of this is a heat source now cocoa butter works on heat and I use something like this, which is called a chrome food warmer. Now, this isn't something I sell. This is something that you can get from Amazon. All you need to do is put in the words chrome food warmer. And all is is basically a metal stand with a tea light in the bottom. So you'll have to buy more tea lights, obviously, to keep replacing them. And it's going to generate and create for us a heat source, which means that when we put our metal paint palette on top, it's going to get hot. So I'm just going to light one now. My students will all have a laugh at me now because my, my clicker has run out of gas. So I'm having to use matches tonight. <laughs> but I think I've been successful which is good because normally I manage to do something I shouldn't do and then we're going to pop on there the metal paint palette so we have to use a metal one not a plastic one because if we use a plastic one that heat will come up and just melt the plastic we need this to get hot so that we can then melt our cocoa butter so that's the purpose of this so cocoa butter is a solid product and what we're going to be doing is putting this on here and we're going to let it melt so I'm going to put some on there now so you can see what it looks like so it's just literally little buttons and we go put them on like there and that will then start to melt so whilst I'm talking and loading up the rest of it with my dusting colours you will see this start to melt now I normally put these to one side so I normally have white and dark on the opposite sides because that then helps me to stop uh, mixing colours up now I've got the most enormous white pot of dust you've ever seen honestly it's huge I don't know why I bought one this big but anyway I have so I'm just going to tip a little bit of white onto there and then I'm going to put some other colours on there so tonight I'm just going to do some sort of random flowers so we've got um this is primrose which is in the kit very nice colour and I think Nikki's just put you a link up for the chrome it's called a chrome food warmer they're roughly five to ten pounds on Amazon um, this colour here is grape violet, so this isn't in the kit, but again, on the website, we have actually got the, these extra colours as well. Once you're actually set up with the main colours, you'll mainly find you'll be changing things like black and white, um, and then depending on, say, which project you're doing, you might then go on and buy other colours, such as like grape violet. Moss green is a really good one. Uh, what else we got here? Well, my daughter Kelly, who is normally with me, um <laughs> isn't here this evening and she would normally be telling me off if I use lots of pink you see so when Kelly's not looking I tend to get the pink out so potentially I've got rose colour here I was looking for dusky pink but I can't find it so I've got rose let's pop that colour in here I'm actually going to do a mixture of colours tonight not just pink I get told off for doing lots of pink and then we've got a really nice limey green colour here so we've got spring green so I tend to use sugar flare colours and the reason I use those is because I've spent a lifetime doing cake decorating and I know these colours inside out and that's why I tend to use them. Um, we'll also put on here moss green which is a slightly darker green. Don't know whether we'll use them all yet, but we're going to anyway. And then one other colour that I'm going to use tonight is this one here. Now, this is called Wonder Dust, and it is a product from a company called Sugar and Crumbs. Uh, this colour is called Bright Gold, and I do have this on my website, and it is a fabulous gold colour. So I'm going to just add in a few hints of gold at the end of the paint, just to kind of brighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to put some of this as well. So what we're learning so far with cocoa butter is that you can paint with, dusts and you can paint with luster colours as well so by a luster colour we mean something that's got a bit of a shine about it so that's one that's shiny the rest of these are all matte colours okay so that's what that means there so let's put that over there to one side and we're going to bring in a sugar pasted plaque that I did just before we went live let's make sure we've got that in there let me just move my chair over a little bit and then what we're going to do is we're going to use um, some patchwork cutters. Now we're going to use this set here, which is called Fantasy Flowers. Um, now, so if any of you have got these, you'll be getting these out after this live, I'm sure. Just have a go. So let's get these out here. 
Now I've already laid out a bit of a pattern earlier, so I'm going to now attempt to copy what I did earlier. <laughs> That's never guaranteed. And also the one I'm going to be using is called Butterflies, which is another patchwork cutter. Now these are a menace to cut out, but they're brilliant for embossing. So if you've got these and you want to have a go at doing that, there's also like little bees and ladybirds and all sorts of things. So you could really go to town with this if you want to. But I particularly like the little tiny butterfly that's down there, but it embosses brilliantly. So I've just spotted, I bet you that's not meant to be in there. I don't know if anybody else has got patchwork cutters, but I have this habit of storing all the wrong things in the wrong places. And I think already I've managed to get a fantasy flower in with the butterfly. So I'm going to remove that now. Don't do what I did years ago. Years ago, I managed to put all my patchwork cutters into the same bag and I regretted it the minute I did it. I'll never do it again. So now I have to try and keep them all separate. Right, so this is for beginners. So if you are thinking, right, I want to have a go at this. So what this does is helps you to understand the texture of cocoa butter and the reasons why that you would do it. So it seems that um, it will help you then progress to some of the other stuff that I've got lined up that you will have a go at, I'm sure, eventually. So um, one of the things I've been showing people a lot how to do is how to do um, uh, painting uh, boards so for example if you're going to do a cake why not do a really lovely pattern going all around your cake board and do it in advance so in other words you can do it before you actually do your cake and loads and loads of people have done it I did a lovely great big golden wedding anniversary one with all beautiful um, flowers um, painted all the way around the outside edge popped on what was relatively a plain cake and it looked amazing so there are lots and lots of things you can do um, without it being too um, too difficult and working in advance right so um, I saw these earlier today and I was thinking what am I going to do with these I don't know anyway I suddenly decided they looked like bear grass so I thought oh, hey I can do something with this so all I'm going to do is literally put this on here and press it down so this sugar paste isn't uh, is fresh it's not been done that long ago I'm also going to take this one here I'm just going to drop it down a little bit further and just press it in lightly press that first one in a bit too hard but there we go that's all right press it in like that and then we'll take this one here and I'm just lining them up at the bottom and we'll have sort of something like that okay so we've got a bit of a bare grass thing going on there let's just push that in there like so okay once you've done it if you kind of run your finger over the top of it what it does is it brings it back up to the surface rather than just kind of leaving these great big indents you can actually sort of bring it back up so if you find you've pressed down too far just get your finger and run over it like so right let's go for our feature flower which is going to be this one here so I'm going to pop that in the middle like that so this is fantasy flowers patchwork cutters so I'm going to just press this down there we go again just rub over like that now it's got a very nice middle here which is this shape here so I'm just building this up for us so we've got something to paint so pop that in the middle like so and then I have got this one here with a different shape so we'll pop that in I'll pop that in there again we'll press down not too bang press if it, you don't press down hard enough the first time the joy of these patchwork cutters is you can actually just pop them back in again you can feel it going back into position so let's press that down if I lift that up there you go like so just run it over there so it comes back up to the edge again uh, what else we got let's have a look let's put this one up here I want to kind of show you as much as I can within this set so I don't want to completely swamp the whole thing but I have mapped this out and it looked fine earlier so we're going to run with this okay again all out of the same set at the moment I haven't changed anything the only different one tonight is the butterfly one really um, and then we've got this one here so we'll pop this is a little version of that other one so we'll pop that in there and we'll do one opposite as well Look at me, the flower arranger here. <laughs> and then where's my little tiny one gone? There it is. We've got a little tiny one there. So we'll put one in there. These are kind of, oops, I pressed a bit hard there. Let's put a bit map then. There we go. Just need to mark it. Don't make it too deep like I just did. Put one up there. Put another one up there. So you can see we've created a bit of a sort of pattern going on here, haven't we? 
I think that'll do for the moment. We can always add to, better to add to than put too much on. And then I'm going to put my little butterfly, I'm going to put one there. Again, I'm just going to press that down. Lovely. And I'm going to do the same on that side. There we go. So we've got a nice sort of selection of fantasy flowers sort of together as a group and we can then work on that and get that painted so if you're thinking oh I can't paint oh, I couldn't possibly paint here's a really good way to start because this is all mapped out for you right where's my bag I've got to put this back in the right bag or be in trouble with myself later on I will come to do a live and then I will not be able to find anything which is quite typical really of me <laughs> and these are all running around after me right let's put these away let's be good want to be naughty on a live because I'll I will regret this otherwise so there are other shapes in there as well so it's not just that one there's a couple of leaves as well um, but I've gone for the bare grass look instead so we'll do that okay there we go now the other thing you're going to need is kitchen roll paper towel whatever you want to call it and that's for cleaning your brushes in between so if you are getting in a pickle with anything and you need to clean your brush in between colors then you've got it now because I do a huge amount of painting nine times out of ten when I go live my brushes have got colors in them because I'm painting continuously so all I'm going to do is just dip my brush into the cocoa butter and just double check what colour I've had in here, which looks like red, which wouldn't surprise me. So there we go. So we're going with paintbrush number one and paintbrush, hopefully, number two. I did bring one out, I'm sure. That's a zero. That's a one. Oh, that's a one. Right. So where's number, number two? There it is. Paintbrush number two. So I tend to paint majority of my work with paintbrush number two and paintbrush number one paintbrush zero and zero zero are for the details and paintbrush three we tend to use for shading and that sort of dry brushing which is another technique that i teach on classes right okay so let's have a look at this what should we start with that would be a good question wouldn't it I didn't really think this through so <laughs> I'm called winging it. If anybody's heard that phrase before, that is me. I will now be winging it. So let's have a little think. So let's start with pink because Kelly's not here and she won't be able to tell me off. So we've got rose colour here, but we're going to put some white in it to lighten it up because otherwise it's going to be too much. It's very strong. Sugar flare colours tend to be quite strong. So we normally add in some white. I'm going to put a tiny bit more and I've gone too far so that it's not the true colour. So white is very important with this. So you want to be able to get a nice colour there. You often find as well when you transfer the paint down to here that it's potentially going to be a bit darker than you anticipated. So sometimes if you just paint onto a piece of paper, white paper, you'll be able to see what's happening. So it's still a bit dark at the moment. So perhaps I will add a bit more white in. And then what we'll do is we'll start painting this one here. So we'll go for our main feature flower in this bit here can be pink so all I'm going to do is do this now cocoa butter dries very quickly it dries between one to two minutes so it's very very quick and it's like paint so what what I'm saying is if you were um, making up a powder paint then you would add a certain amount of water to be able to make a decent consistency and cocoa butter is exactly the same so if you're making up a paint and you've put in too much water, then it's gonna be quite translucent. And this is exactly the same. So if you put in too much cocoa butter, then the paint will be very thin, and then you'll be able to see through it. So what we're trying to do is aim for a bit of a middle ground here, where it's not too thick and not too thin. And that's something that comes with experience. That's something that comes after you've had a go several times at mixing, if you'll soon work it out, um, as to how thick or how thin you're going to make your paint but you can paint over it so if it is too thin you can paint over it all is not lost if it's too thick you're just going to find it's like putting on cement and you'll give up so you will more likely be going the other way than that way okay so it is completely possible for you to be able to change and add and paint over your colours so and that's the thing about cocoa butter as well it does allow you to paint layers so that's something that we can then use to do shading it's something we can use to paint over mistakes or things like that so it's nice and easy to be able to do something like that it's very very forgiving cocoa butter and if you're going to someone's going to say to me well what about just painting with alcohol the problem with painting with alcohol is every time you then paint another bit with alcohol um, you're then pulling off the paint that you put on before because alcohol 
when you put alcohol on alcohol it just completely removes the color so um, cocoa butter doesn't do that it builds up layers and that's the whole purpose of kind of doing this is that you'll be able to see that it it builds up layers now i'm going to go down to a slightly smaller brush here i'm still going to use my pink color i'm just going to clean this out just to make sure I don't forget so I'm just dipping it in the cocoa butter and just twisting it you can use some hot water but to be perfectly honest with you I find this just as easy save me having to run back and forth to the sinks once I'm sat down I don't particularly want to start moving around I want to stay where I am so I'm going to reflect this color in this little flower here so I'm just now going to paint the inside of this with the same color and it doesn't matter particularly, I've gone into the centre a bit, gone over my lines, but that doesn't matter because again, I can paint over it. It's not the end of the world. Now, something else that you may or may not have noticed is that I'm actually painting on a coloured sugar paste versus painting on white. And why I'm doing that is because it makes the white stand out more. So think about that as well. Don't think about just painting on a white cake. Think about painting on a pastel colour background because you can achieve so much more if you do to start with. I have got some cakes that are painted on white. Um, I've got some that are painted on black as well and I'll show you some of those later on. I've got some photos from the school so that you'll be able to see what some of the cakes look like and I've also got the beginners cocoa butter painting course in front of me as well so you'll be able to have a look at those and explain what the difference is between kind of this start and what you're going to learn next. So there you go. So what we're doing here is we're picking up the colours so that when we look at it across there, we're seeing the colours moving around the whole thing. So if I wanted to sort of push it out a little bit further, I could then perhaps paint the centre of that pink. What I want to do is make sure that the colour is spread throughout the whole thing, but without sort of spreading it all large across the whole thing. So this is now dried already. You can see already it started to dry. So what we can do is we can go back, we can grab some more colour and we can make it a little bit darker. So if I just add some more of this rose colour in here, I can go into the centre of the flower if I want to and I can just literally take the colour like so and I can pull this colour through to make some nice shading in the centre here. like so so it's not just flat one color it's also shading out from the center as well so this is a fantasy flower so it doesn't really have any kind of you know botanical um, rules we can do whatever we want with it and that's the whole purpose of this is that we can actually just decide exactly what it is that we're going to do with it as we go along we're making it up basically <laughs> I did actually plan the pattern. I mean, believe you me, that was half the battle. So it's very unusual for me. There we go. So you can do something like that. So you can see very quickly that already you are able to take the second colour through and get a bit of shading going on there, especially on a big flower, because if it's very matte, it can look a bit on the boring side. Right, let's clean our brush. Let's get that done. And then what we're going to do next, we'll have a look at doing um, a lilac colour. Now, my daughter Kelly, um, is uh, who works with me, teaches colour theory, which is one of the other lessons that we have on the school. And she is absolutely fantastic at colour theory. And she has transformed the way that we have been working with some of these colours. Because this violet colour is actually quite what she calls a dirty colour. It's not particularly nice. However, if you put petal blue into it, you do actually get a really lovely lilac colour. Um, it's like a little bit of magic. Um, Kelly um, is superb at colour theory and she's the one that we all use for reference for colour. So that's why I was ma making the comments about Kelly's not here, I can use pink because she always tells me off, you see, every time I use pink. Um, she goes, oh, not, not pink again, mum. So if you add in the violet to this, you get a really lovely lilac colour. And that's actually quite a difficult colour to achieve in cake decorating because we have such strange E numbers um, that it can be a little bit of a monster to create um, in a nice bright colour. So this one here is, is the way to do it. So we've got sort of a lilac -y colour going on there. So let's paint. What should we do now? Let's paint these up here. I just want to make sure that it's not too dark. Hold on. Let's put that in there again. 
make sure we've got a little bit lighter don't want it to be too dark the whole purpose of this tonight is it's not going to be too dark the trouble is sometimes when you do lives is that you have to make it relatively dark so you can actually see it because otherwise i can see it i remember teaching um cherry blossom cupcake online it was so difficult because nobody could see it i could see it but um it was very difficult to see online because it was very pale i think that was one of the most difficult classes that i taught during lockdown just because we couldn't actually see it um so i tried to paint everything a little bit darker than perhaps i normally would for something like this so again we can just fill this in don't have to put shading on every single flower it's not necessary but it is nice just to be able to mix and just do different colors as you go just different ways okay like so so if you can imagine for example you're going to do this one evening let's just say you've decided to do a bit of painting this evening you would literally I, i've got a box at home i've got down my unit i've got dusting colors everywhere i've got the world's biggest box and it's full of them and all my stuff is here but when i'm at home i've also got another little box that i bought from hobbycraft actually it's a pink sparkly thing and that's full of a double set of everything so i can paint at home as well because obviously i'm obsessed um and that works really well when i want to do some painting i just get my little box out and i set it all up and you can be painting within half an hour, you know, literally roll yourself out a bit of sugar paste and you're off. The only thing this doesn't work with is paper. So if you suddenly decided you want to have a practice on paper, you're going to find the paper will absorb it and then you will be on a, a, a loser there. It won't work. So you want to be using um, you want to be using sugar paste. So cover yourself some little plaques or something and use those. Right. Let's go to Primrose. So Primrose is a mega bright colour. So we're going to add some white to it, like so, put that in there. Right, let's put some of this in here. What should we do with this? Let's put some in, I might put this in the centre of this actually, just so we've got a nice bright middle, just so we can see. We've actually got a little gap around the outside edge there, so we could even go back and put in maybe black around the outside edge might look nice or white I don't know yet we'll work that out as we go along but that looks nice you can see then it's starting to pick up you can see the shading there and then in order to take our colour across the whole thing we will do let's do some we'll do these yellow I think up here we'll spread our colour out a little bit like so and this one on the opposite side. Go. Okay. See how easy it is. It's not difficult to do, and you're already creating a little masterpiece without even sort of trying too hard. See, that looks very pretty. Yellow is key colour for the centres. It's very important. Um, if you actually go round, uh, you get quite sad in your old age. Well, I do. Anyway, I start going round and looking in <laughs> flowers in the centre of flowers. I think this comes with doing sugar flowers as well, is you start looking into the middle of these flowers and the number of them that have got this lime green in the middle of them is really high. So then you suddenly go, oh, OK, right. So I need to do that. So it's it's just kind of buying into that as well and starting to look hard at what's around you and going oh, okay yeah I can see I can see exactly what's going on there let's go to petal blue on its own which is a really nice color again that's in the kit in the beginner's kit I love this color it's a really nice color and it's fantasy flowers but we'll pretend it's like forget me nots or something shall we so we'll just paint these little ones that are around the edge here and just pop those in there like that so I'm using paintbrush number one at the moment. Now we'll just pop those over there. Lots of people say, oh, I struggle and all this. Well, sometimes it can be down to the brushes as well. It can be something really, really simple that's just got, the, you've just got a brush that's too big. And I always say to my students, once you've, once you've got your set of brushes, don't use them for anything else. Do not put them in sugar glue or anything else. They are your painting brushes. They are sacred. So keep them well away from everything else and just use them for your cocoa button painting because that's all you need to use them for, nothing else. It's really simple. OK, 
Okay, there you go. Can you see how easy that is and how pretty that looks already? It's coming along very, very quickly without actually sort of doing too much work to it. It's coming out really nice. Okay, so I'm going to darken up. Let's see what we're going to do now. We're going to darken up this one. We'll go for a bit more purple in this one here, maybe. We'll give that one a purple middle or something. Don't want to make it too dark, the flowers. I want them to be relatively light, but we could paint these up purple in the middle here, like so. And again, if you want to take the shading through, you can do that. I'll show you that again in a second. Okay, how's that coming out? Yeah, that looks good. Sometimes when I look up on my camera, I get a different view to what I'm looking at because sometimes when I when I look over the top of this I tend to get a light shining across it from the studio lights so it's a job sometimes for me to actually see what's going on so when I look up at the screen I get a better view so I'm kind of looking at the same view as you at the moment so that we can see exactly what's going on here let's go for a really bright spring green colour why not let's put a little bit of that in there and um, we'll put some white in there I love this colour I think it's absolutely fabulous I really do. I really like spring green. It's a lovely colour. Very limey green and lovely. And it really does lift a lot of the painting with flowers because it's so bright. So we're just going to go around here. You'll see this pick up quite quickly, I would think. So I'm painting on a pale blue background tonight. I've used Colour Splash Navy, which I've just literally kneaded into a little bit of sugar paste. And then... I've covered this board so it's very straightforward nothing particularly complicated so you don't need to buy expensive sugar paste to do this you can literally just use anything so if you've got some Renshaws or you've got anything kicking about you can use it doesn't matter but don't use paper it doesn't work on paper Sometimes I used to have to do sort of short practices and I would do them on paper and then instantly regret it because you can't get the same effect um, as sugar paste because paper is absorbent. And so as you're painting, obviously the cocoa butter is getting absorbed and then you can't do anything with it. So that's no good. Can you see the difference that lime green has already done? It's really changed the way this is looking. It's really picked up. Made it a lot brighter already. It's a lovely colour, but it has to be used carefully because it's one of these ones that can really overpower this very quickly without actually sort of, you know, achieving anything other than just making it look luminous green. Now, around the outside edge of this, I'm going to just nip in a little bit of green because I think that will look really nice. If you look inside lots of flowers, you see yellow and then you see green going around the outside edge there. So I'm just going to take my brush and just go, just stip all that around the outside edge. Look at that. That's coming out really nice, isn't it? Okay, so it's just like a little line inside of there. How about that? See, suddenly that changes it as well. It's all these little tiny things that you can do that will make a difference. Right, I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. Now, if you press down too far, you saw me kind of rubbing my finger over it earlier. That helps to bring the sugar paste back up. So if you suddenly find you've gone too far, you can do that. Now I'm going to switch to 00, zero which is the tiniest of the brushes. Now this one isn't in the kit, but we do sell it separately if you wanted it. Um, it comes with um, people tend to buy it later on down the line because it isn't in the beginner's cocoa butter course, but it is. Um, I do use it a fair amount for tiny, tiny detail. We're going to have a go at doing that bare grass. So I might go quiet for a minute. <laughs> everybody I might stop talking for a minute which would be unusual so we're just going to use moss green which is another color uh, isn't in the kit but we have got woodland green in the kit that's very nice I'm just going to turn it like this so it's a little bit more towards me I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to put it right up on its tip and I'm going to very carefully just follow the lines that the patchwork cutters give me now my wrist is on the table my hand is sort of gripped around it as well. Now, it doesn't matter if I go over the lines a little bit because we can make this a bit thicker anyway. It doesn't have to be as thin as this. Let's go down there. And come up this side. Like so. So 
doesn't really matter whether you paint towards yourself or away from yourself, whatever suits you really. I'm right handed, but what I do recommend you do is get the painting, um, what you're painting into the right place so it's comfortable for you. You've got it upside down at the moment and so have I. Um, so your view is the same view as my as mine. So I find it easier to turn this upside down and go down rather than towards me. Certainly for that top bit there. And then when I get down to this bit here, I can still continue to go this way if I want to, or I can change direction, it doesn't really matter. But just a nice thin brush to do this, like that. And then this one here, round we go. And the brush is actually sort of almost fitting into the little um, indent we've created with the cutter. So you're not really doing this totally freehand. You can feel the brush kind of going into the gap. Occasionally you can breathe, but only with permission. <laughs> you can't breathe any other time. That and the Royal Icing, the other course I teach on sugar craft, you're not allowed to breathe on that one either. So only when you're doing stuff like this, this is good practice for when we do animal painting, you see, because we do lots of like whiskers and things. And with animal painting, you do need a nice thin brush to do that. There you go, you see, that wasn't too bad, was it? Not bad for a live. And then if you want to go back and say you want to thicken them up, so perhaps you want to add, make them a little bit thicker. Again, you can just go around with your brush. You might just want to do maybe the top half where it's just tipping over the top. You can thicken them up like that. You don't have to leave them like that, which is good news if you've gone over your lines, isn't it? You can go like that. But we'll leave those for the moment because they've been fairly successful. I'm quite happy with those. <laughs> That's what I like. Now, you can see I've done some little butterflies there and I'm going to use my gold to paint the butterflies. I thought, why not? If, if we're going to have a fancy flower arrangement, we're going to have some gold butterflies. So I want to show you what the luster colours do. So again, what you'll find with luster is that you tend to use more of the dust than you would do if you're doing a matte colour. So matte colours tend to use less than these golds. So there we go. We will come back to the gold a bit later on. And what it's doing, it's very quickly picking up all the um, lovely patterns that the patchwork cutters have. So you already be able to see that the butterflies, all the indents on the butterflies are coming out now very quickly. Like so. And we'll do the other one. We'll have two gold butterflies, I think. But we can also use this colour to add highlights elsewhere, which I think works really well, rather than just kind of leaving, you know, gold up there randomly. We can put gold on some of these flowers as well. We can paint over cocoa butter when it's dried. So as long as it's dry, which, as I say, takes one to two minutes, we can use the gold for highlights. And that's really what we want to do. So we can go back in here again. Let's grab some more cocoa butter. You see I've near enough run out of cocoa butter there, so I'm now using this one over here. And I only had five drops in there and five in there. So you can just see how little that we're using of this and why one of those bags um, goes an awful long way. So let's do this the centre here. Let's do this gold. Missed it anyway, so let's add gold to it. Like so. See, then it kind of picks up that, so it starts to make a bit more sense. And I tell you what we could do, we could try and put some gold around the edge of this as well. Let's see if that works. So we could go round this centre part here, just with the gold. There you go, it's a bit different. So that golden sort of lilacs, navies, those kind of colours go really nicely together. And again, if I looked at that and went, oh, I don't like that, I can paint over the top of it. What I would have to do is just let that dry, then I will be able to paint over the top. I could also take this and I could just stipple some gold over the top of this centre of this flower now. So I've got a nice yellow base and I could just take my gold and just put some little dots over it. So I'm not going to completely cover it. But again, that will give me a slightly different look. So it means that that middle part there will be, it will look, I'll hold this up at the end so you can see it, but it will um, go in there like so. Okay, let's clean the brush up again. And we're just going to do a tiny bit more shading on these blue flowers. So we're going to go back to this sort of dark purpley, bluey type colour here. 
and I'm just going to put a little bit of colour in there, grab my brush and just pull that through because I want this to have a bit more shading going on here so that it's not too flat. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So my daughter Kelly, she paints very differently from me. It's um, she paints, she has slightly different techniques from me. But you'll see, so my daughter Kelly, you'll find her mainly on Let Shop and um, my Facebook lives. She's not here this evening; she's out working. Um, but she's normally here with me doing comments. So we are quite interactive when we come to do this kind of stuff, so that you know what's going on. She teaches two Facebook Lives, she teaches colour theory and she teaches matching metallics as well, which is all on the Facebook Lives and uh, I teach near enough everything else. She does lots of chocolate painting for me as well and that's the other thing, if you wanted to paint chocolate you would need to use cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is the product that you need to paint anything chocolate because it's the only product that will fix itself to chocolate. It's the only one there isn't anything else that is it it's the only one so that's the one you've got to use there is no alternative right so let's clean the brush up again so i'm just using my kitchen mole here and my i've still got the zero zero brush which i think is now a bit too small so we'll we'll upgrade to brush one which has got green in it so let's get rid of that and we'll start putting in a few white highlights now so don't underestimate the power of white especially when you have got a coloured background because if you've got a coloured background if you then start using white it's really going to pop you're going to see this really stand out in a minute so we're going to just make up a little pool of white and I'm going to show you another tool that I use a lot which is called a dotting tool and I'm going to see show you what happens there yeah someone's made a really good point there about the chocolate if you do use chocolate um, and you make a chocolate mold which i make masses and masses and masses of when it's um, gone into the fridge you do need it to come back up to room temperature before you start painting it otherwise you're going to find <clears throat> it's going to be an absolute pain um, it sets as you're painting so this is a dotting tool if you see it's got a little ball on the end and an uber tiny little ball on the other end i've got these in packs of five but we're really running out now i've only managed to get single ones so i might have to change the website um but yeah there's all sorts of different sizes on there we're going to just kind of use this one here which is sort of a medium size i guess and we're going to just use it to create some highlights so i'm just going to put my dotting tool into the white and i'm literally just going to press it down like that you're going to see it better on the on the blue when I get that far but for the moment I'm just putting a little tiny dot on the flowers centers so it makes them stand out more I'm then going to do it on the blue flowers and I'm going to make that a bit bigger actually should we do a bigger one yes let's do a bigger one so we'll change our dotting tool over to this one so we get a bigger white flower like so so what's happening is the paint on the dotting tool gives you an exact circle, whereas with a paintbrush it's much more difficult to do that. With the dotting tool you get an exact circle, which is much nicer and much easier to do. And then the lovely gypsophilia, which my friend is always talking about. So I've got this florist friend and she says I'm obsessed with it, which I am. Um, but it does look really, really nice amongst floral displays and also painting as well. So you can literally take hold of this dotting tool and we can put some little white together. Now, because this sugar paste is quite soft, I can feel it kind of creeping into the sugar paste as I'm pressing down, but that's absolutely fine. No problem with that. I'm just filling some of the little gaps. How's that looking on there? Yeah, that's it. So Gypsophilia, Baby's Breath, that's the name of it. Oops, I put it in the green then. Hold on, let's make sure I didn't go that. We don't want any green on here, spoiling my display. <laughs> that's naughty, we can't have that. Right, let's move it out a little bit. Uh, we'll take it up the edge there, around this side. So you get roughly about three spots before you have to go back and, and refill it. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's not too drastic, I don't think. There we 
go. And up the end there, like so. Can you see the difference that makes? It's huge. I'm going to pick this up in a second so you can see exactly what I've done. I'm going to just switch it over and just use the other side, which is a little bit smaller. And I can always then just put a little bit extra ones in that further out that are teeny tiny. I've got a few up around here as well. But it's a very nice display, all done with patchwork cutters. I've been under no pressure whatsoever to draw or do anything that I don't want to do. I've just literally been able to press some patchwork cutters into some sugar paste and I've been able to create my own plaque which I can then keep and I could use it on a cake. This actually is a six inch round. So if you had a six inch round cake, I think you'd easily cope with doing this straight onto a cake anyway. But you know, if you didn't want to and you felt that was too much pressure, you could um, do it on the plaque for them to remove. But I think something like this is fairly straightforward. You can always have a practice run as well. Maybe you want to practice your colors. I'm now getting carried away. This is every time I pick up the dotting tool, I'm off. So let's put some of that in there. So you can see all the different things you can build here. I'm going to pick this up in a second. Right. Let's put one in there as well. So you could just keep going. It's very addictive. Right. Let me pick this up so you can have a closer look at it. So there you go. You'll be able to see it a little bit better now. And now I'm holding it up close and all the little white um marks that I've put on there so you can see that you could easily do a cake board or you could do even cupcake toppers that works really well as well with these fantasy flowers so you could do cupcake toppers which you could again cut out in advance you could then emboss them and then you could just literally sit there and paint them it's very very straightforward it's not difficult to do at all you can then store them I usually store things between two cake lids you know two um, cardboard lids that works well and then when you're getting ready to do cupcakes you can do a nice big buttercream swirl and then you can pop that on there like that so what do you think is that the kind of thing I can persuade you to have a go at <laughs> so this is patchwork fantasy flowers mixed with the patchwork butterflies so again lots of different butterflies in there in fact you could do a whole cake covered in butterflies you could literally get hold of them and stamp them onto your cake um, and paint them all sorts of different colours, lots and lots of metallic colours. We've got a set of seven metallic colours on the website, which is actually part of the Jubilee cake, but that would work really well with this as well. So if you fancied having a go at something like this, then you could do that. But of course, you've got the beginner's kit as well, which will then set you up going forward for everything else that you want to do. Because once you've got that kit, um, you won't need to buy anything else apart from the odd dust here and there. It will be um, something that you can use over and over again. Let me show you what the, the beginner's projects look like. So this is what I call have a go, pick up some confidence. Let's see how you get on with it. Are you enjoying it? OK, maybe you'd like to try something else. So we have a beginner's course and I'm going to show you what that's consisting of. And I would want you to not jump through the floor and go, oh, my goodness, we're going from this to this. But we are. So this is the beginner's course and it consists of four different projects. So we have a panda. We have a teddy. There they are. And we have a giraffe. And we have a puppy as well. Right, I'm just going to move the camera up a little bit so you can see them all. Right, we're going on a ride, everybody. There we go. Oh, a little bit higher, a little bit down again. There we go. Right, let's push them up. There we go. So this is my beginner's course and it consists of four projects. Um, and each one of them has its challenges. But they are very straightforward and there are a lot of people who are on live at the moment that have actually done this course and gone on and been extremely successful painters. And I'm sure they'll all start shouting in a minute going, I've done that course, I've done that course. It is a really nice, simple way to get started because each one, each project is approximately two to three hours long to get you started. And you'll find as you start to go through, you'll start to understand shading. You'll start to understand what brushes you should be using. You'll be understanding consistencies and working out exactly what it is that you need to go. So this is wonderful for having a go at painting and relaxing and not thinking too hard. And this is kind of the next step. So this is what I call beginner's cocoa butter painting. Um, and it gets you started then on doing everything that you want to 
to do in terms of learning how to do cocoa butter painting and this is in the gold silver and bronze membership on my website which is my monthly membership or of course you can buy it as a standalone class if you just want to have a go and see how you get on like that so that's the beginners one what else can i teach you well that's the thing isn't it so i'm going to just show you a few other images now of some other classes that i teach so lots of you love the flowers so we do do flowers as well this is the beginners floral class uh, and this is one of five projects on this one and that is cherry blossom which is quite apt at the moment because there's some of it around although i think quite a lot of it's gone now um, but there is a cherry blossom class on there as well we also have got a Facebook Live for this one here, which is like a rustic heart. You know, it's that kind of thing you find when you go to a wedding um, with a really lovely flower on the side of there as well. And if you cannot draw and you're looking at this going, well, I can't draw, it doesn't matter. I prefer to teach people who know absolutely nothing. I mean, I would rather you turn around to me and said, all I can do is paint a stick man. And I'd be very happy with that. You'd be amazed what I can get you to do um, doing all of this. And there are loads and loads of people on here that have started from stick man base and are now painting some incredible stuff. So I feel very proud of my students. They've all done really, really well, but you can kind of see how it starts to build across. I'm gonna show you a handbag now. Somebody's just mentioned they did a, a makeup bag with a cherry blossom and I bet you that was Sharon. Can't actually see on here, but I'm gonna bet it might be. Um, so that is a peony bag so that's a handbag one of these ones you can pick up like dawn butler makes um and that shows you how to carve that bag and paint this lovely peony pattern on it. it's very much kind of um ted baker type style bag um so you again you can change the color of the sugar paste you can change the color of the flower you would still just follow the principle of how i've painted it and it will include all these guidelines and templates for you so you are not left adrift wondering what to do and how it all works you will be able to follow a very set procedure on how this works so maybe if flowers are not your thing then we have got some sort of comical type things as well so there is a lion up there so he's got a very nice colorful mane he's quite a nice kids project so if you fancied having a go at something like that or maybe you quite like the idea of doing something that's like um a sort of a rabbit a sort of comical rabbit i seem to have loads of rabbit painting i'm not entirely sure why i think it's um <laughs> i keep finding really nice pictures of rabbits to paint <laughs> so it's just keep slipping into this zone um i have to keep reminding myself no not another rabbit anyway we have got this little chap here so you can do things that are um quite comical and quite light very similar to the beginners course or you can move forward and do more realistic stuff so i do teach the harder end of the scale as well so i'm going to show you now we've got a dog cake here so that's a dog that's actually somebody's dog i know um, and that's her dog that we painted so again that's another tutorial that you can follow and then we have a new tutorial coming out on the 11th of june which is this one here which is a tiger which is actually behind me at the moment sitting behind me at the moment which you'll see when i come back onto camera and this one has been suggested by one of my gold members so the gold membership to, uh, the gold membership people have their own facebook page and um, they are able we ask and what would you like what what you know i'm busy obviously creating classes left right and center but um i listen so if you want a particular class somebody's asked for a tiger so that's what they've got so they've now got a tiger painting class that's coming on the 11th of june and one of the most reassuring things about this is that when you see what I started like with this tiger painting, you'll feel relieved because when you do lots of cake painting, it takes time to get towards a point where there is a return and you start to think, OK, this is going to work here. Because sometimes when you're doing painting, um, particularly some project like this, it can take a while for it to actually look like a tiger. And I make lots of comments as I'm going along along the lines of it now looks like an orange werewolf. And and what am I going to do? And sometimes when I'm actually even painting to teach, I sit there going, oh, am I going to carry on with this? Am I not going to carry on with this? And if you push through it, it nine times out of 10, it comes out really, really well. It is 
all of the students will tell you there is a turning point with this where you have to just keep going because you can look at it after about half an hour and go well that's just rubbish you have to keep going and one of the best ways to kind of understand that is when you're watching the videos is to watch it right to the end so you will see that turning point coming in front of you and you'll go ah that's where it goes and it's normally like three quarters of the way through I used to teach um, novelty cakes in this classroom and one of the problems I used to have was I'd have all these people here doing a novelty cake. Let's say we were doing a toadstool and we'd carve the cake, cover the cake, and we'd have it all stacked together and it would look pretty bad, to be perfectly honest. You know, you'd be looking at it going, right, OK, so we've got this kind of ropey structure and uh, they would all be going, oh, this is terrible, it's miserable, not really getting on very well. Give them another half an hour, 45 minutes when they start adding the fairies and all the little all the little bits to dress it with suddenly the room changes because they go oh wow, that's the best cake I've ever done and you suddenly start thinking yeah you've got to turn that point and get to the bit where it starts to move forward and that's so important across the the whole thing even Vicky will tell you um, that it's really important to keep pushing forward because you know if you're starting off with a model for example Vicky is very very good at modeling you know if you start off with a round ball and then put two eyes in it and go I can't do it you need to push forward with it and see if you can get to the end of it and get to the point where you can go actually do you know what that works really really well and I'm now really really happy with this and it's all practice and everything like that as well and that comes with just keep trying and keep making cakes for lots of um willing volunteers is what I say um <laughs> we have lots of discussions about this so I make lots and lots of cakes live and I give them all away my latest cake which I did yesterday um, is going off to a Ukrainian family I thought you know what it's not the hugest of cakes we've got new families in this area and so it's off to Ukrainian family tomorrow which is lovely and um, that was painted with cocoa butter I think it's still here actually yeah hold on let me get you this because I want to show you what else you can do with cocoa butter so even if you don't fancy having a go at painting um, a portrait type thing you can have a go at making something like that there we go so this is a chocolate mold so I've made my cat out of chocolate and then what I've done is I've painted it with cocoa butter so I've just done exactly what I've just done there so I've mixed up some cocoa butter and some dusting colour and I've sat and painted it and I've now got myself a nice little grey cat so I've also got a ginger cat which Kelly painted which is here so I'm going to hold this one up as well there we go Vicky will love this Vicky likes cats <laughs> so there you go so there's the little ginger cat as well he's staying with me though because that's my cat so that one's not going this is going but not the other one ginger cat's not going anywhere in fact I might keep it forever because I do have a ginger cat and uh, so that's my Norman he's staying with me but if you want to do any cocoa butter painting then painting on chocolate with your brush is the way forward these poor prints here are patchwork cutters and again I've I pushed them into the sugar paste like that and then I've taken my paintbrush and I have gone over those poor prints um, and that was a nice easy way to do it because poor prints actually are really quite difficult to do um, they're much easier if you can just literally stamp them on and then you've got the um the guidelines there for you um i know sometimes you think oh these cake decorators they're so talented you know but i would be using anything i can get my hands on to paint to make it look um easy because my whole background so i've got to make sure this goes on the here because i don't want that to fall off at this point um, my whole background is commercial cake decorating so I've spent a lot of time uh, making a lot of cakes for a lot of people as quickly as I possibly can because obviously I want to make money and the only way I can make money is by working quickly so believe you me if I can find a shortcut I will um, and that's the way that I tend to teach as well as I do um, in my work as well because I'm still making cakes for customers I'm still an active working cake decorator making wedding cakes cupcakes all of these things um, as well well as doing all my teaching school and the demos and let's shop cake live and do I ever sleep no um, <laughs> do I let my husband do all the housework yes um, <laughs> he'll probably agree with you on that one anyway but what I'm saying is that 
um, you know, it is, um, there's lots and lots of ways to cut corners and that's one of the things that I do teach quite avidly in my cake school is the quick way. I'm not into teaching the long way round because we don't need to know the long way round. We want to know the most effective way round because everybody's time and hours are precious these days. So it's nice to be able to do things um, that are more quick and effective and very um, interesting. Who's watching the tutorials? <laughs> So my tutorials are literally a camera to the left hand side of me over the top and you are watching what's going on. Very similar to what you've seen tonight, um, maybe slightly more to this side rather than in front of me because actually last night my cameras were playing up horrendously and I was painting with a camera in the middle of me. I had, the, I had my arms wrapped, the camera was here and my arms were wrapped around this camera and honestly I couldn't see what I was doing but it looked okay at the end so that's fine isn't it? So <laughs> it's amazing what you have to do when the cameras start breaking down um, but it was okay and we got through it and everything was fine so there are there's lots and lots of potential with this so if it's something you've thought oh I wouldn't mind having a go but I'm really not too sure do go and have a look at my website because it's going to help you to make some decisions as to whether or not this is something that you want to get involved with and then over on that's our school site then over on this site here we have all our products so everything that we use in our products so like we have the all the patchwork cutters we have a whole section on there in cake supplies so when you go on there you'll go hold on a minute this is a cake this is a wedding cake decorator if you look at the top where it says cake supplies and click on there then it all opens up with cake painting and chocolate and molds and all these other bits and pieces so we very much support our classes with our products so we're not uh, like uh, I'm trying to give an example we're not like one of the big online cake stores we stock what we teach so um, for the Jubilee crown for example we have got the molds specifically that you need for that course and the colors that you need specifically for that course we don't just stock absolutely everything we stock what we specifically need for these courses um, there's been a few comments coming through, but if you have got any questions, then I'm more than happy to answer them. So if anybody wants to start tapping away and ask me any questions, then that's fine. Otherwise, I will start talking about the ice cream van that's coming around our village on Saturday because uh, <laughs> I'll normally end up talking about that when I do a live. Now, the one thing I am going to do while I'm sat here is I'm just going to blow out this candle because... <sighs> I have this habit of not and it's very important when you finish cocoa butter painting you remember to blow out the candle so a number of times I've got home and gone I can't remember if I've done it and I've had to come all the way back here whereas if I've done a live you see I can actually have a look on the live and check I've done it so that's why I do it so if anybody has any questions any burning questions about cocoa butter painting or you have any questions after the live has been over then you are welcome to get in contact with me via the cake school so I do lots of lives which I've talked about already my next live is Saturday morning and that's on Let's Shop Cake Live so that's you can see behind me I'm going the wrong way there that way Let's Shop Cake Live is a Facebook page of mine and that's my cake shopping channel and that's where we do our Saturday morning demonstrations between myself and my daughter Kelly and we will show you all our new cookie cutters and all the new classes coming out and all the colours that we recommend that you use for the particular courses so that runs every Saturday it's running at 9 30 this week because it's our village fate and our village will be descending into chaos because literally the fate is happening behind my unit so I have to get out before I spend the rest of the day trapped in traffic uh, so we're running a bit earlier this Saturday at 9 30 um oh, question oh that's Vicky right how do you clean your brushes so when you're um painting you're going to clean your brushes with cocoa butter as you go but once you have finished cocoa butter is heat reactant so just keep remembering it's heat reactant so all you would do is go over to the sink when you've completed everything um, get some hot water and just in a little pot stick in a bit of um fairy liquid or whatever and just whiz them around like that and that will just clean them all up let them dry and then you're good to go for the next time but melted cocoa butter in between is much easier than getting up getting hot water sitting back down again and I'm not saying that makes me sound like I don't want to move or I'm lazy but what it does do it means that you can keep going and you're not introducing water into this painting process you are sticking with oils while you are painting so the minute you start bringing in water 
then you potentially you've got more problems. You've got to sit there and dry them all out. I just find it more straightforward to do it that way than any other way. I think um, for those of you that have um, done cocoa butter paints before, you soon get into the habit of it because it's so cheap, because you get an enormous bag and it's going to take you, I would say one of those bags, and bearing in mind I'm painting continuously, probably takes me about seven months to get through, and I am painting all the time. So they go an awful long way. Once you've got a bag, um, you really probably won't need to get another one for a long time. So yeah, it, they are very, very good value for money. But you need it in order to be able to do this. It's kind of one of those things like, um, you know, baking powder. It's like a cupboard uh, essential. You need it and put it in your cupboard. And then when you want to do it, you've got it. Because otherwise, painting with alcohol, painting with gels um or anything else like that is just not the same as doing this with cocoa butter this is actually delightful to paint with it's like painting with acrylics and again even if you don't know what that is um you will learn it on all these courses and if you want to get a bit more of a feel for kind of how this works or how how it feels i do have a youtube channel as well which is at tracy man cakes um if you go on there subscribe you'll see there are quite a few videos on there at the moment um some of them showing lots of painting on patchwork cutters so um hopefully that will inspire a few more of you to maybe have a go there's like a lily and there's all sorts of different things on there as well as the teaching school which is much more detail and lots of support as well particularly for the gold members who are um paying 12.50 a month and they are able then to they're all together as a group and they're all busy chatting away to each other and it's lovely because they're all doing different things at different times they're taking stuff from one project and putting it on another project so it's all going very well from that point of view and they've got lots and lots of new projects coming up as well and even in terms of cake painting I'm going to show you this one we've got this cake coming up on the cake school this is all hand painted as well it actually comes under gold and sugar craft but it is a wedding cake and I have painted it so I will be showing you how to paint that cake um, and it, so it's not quite the same as doing kind of portrait type stuff but it still falls under cake painting so again there are lots and lots of skills that you can use cocoa butter painting to use it just doesn't have to be restricted to just doing items on cakes you can paint chocolate you can paint a whole cake you can paint little plaques you can paint all sorts of different things and you can always start small and you can always get bigger just depending on kind of of how your confidence goes with it so kind of just see how you feel and if you feel like you're going in the right direction and you want to have a go then by all means have a go so i hope that um, this has been of interest to some of you and hopefully some of you are feeling inspired now and would like to join the cake school or would like to have a go at doing some painting and say we've got the kits we have got the school there if you would like to go over and have a look so i hope that you have found this interesting i'd like to thank vicky for letting me or asking me to come on here and do a live i'm delighted to be able to come and do a live um, on any channel that asked me to do it I'm more than happy to come over and, and have a little chat um, Vicky's modelling is amazing it's much better than mine absolutely brilliant so do have a look at some of Vicky's work as well because she is an excellent modeler and she tells me she's writing a second book and I'm putting her under pressure now because it's got to be done by the NEC hasn't it Vicky so Vicky hasn't got time to be watching this live she should be doing her filming <laughs> Um, and there we are but thank you very much for everybody that has tuned in this evening if you are new um, it's to me anyway I, um, do please follow me I'm more than happy for you to follow me on Facebook so I'm over at, at Tracy Man Cakes my next live Saturday at 9 30 and then I'm live on my own Facebook page time on my own facebook page tuesday at 6 30 um, we've got an events page on the website as well so which actually works as a diary for me nobody else <laughs> i'll have to go and log on there and find out where i am i set all this stuff up and then i don't know where i am most of the time so i have to go back and check but anyway i'll also be at cake international as well so if any of you are joining us at cake international this year i will be there i've signed up for my stand so you will see me there i'm put down for demos as well so i'll probably be doing something at some point but I will be there if you're not there well guess what I'll be doing loads of Facebook lives from Cake International I normally do a great big walk around the, all the competition stuff on the Sunday morning before it opens so we can have a little look have a look at who's won what so um, I will be doing that as well so even if I don't meet you or even if you want to follow me on Facebook then there's lots of opportunity to get involved with everything that's going on and hopefully we look forward to meeting some of you all in the future. So thank you all very much for watching this evening and I will see you all again soon. Bye for now.